In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can check if a string or a word is a palindrome using JavaScript. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to JavaScript Snippets, a series of tutorials where we're looking at some key tasks that you need to do as a junior developer with JavaScript. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe below to support the channel and so that you don't miss out on any updates. So this is another one of those tasks that you're probably not going to do on a day-to-day -day basis as a developer, but it's one of those classic examples of an algorithm that you'll get asked at an interview, and that is to write a function that checks whether a string is a palindrome or not. So let's kick off with a quick example to start off with. Let's define our function first of all. So we'll say is palindrome. And probably the most fundamental way to approach this, if you don't have access to any of the inbuilt functions or that's not allowed in your particular challenge, is to loop through the string and check each ends actually match up. So we'll write a for loop to do that. And within our for loop, we're going to check the start of the string with the end of the string. So we'll say if the character at position i, which is our index as we loop through the array, does not equal to the last item in the string, and we'll have to subtract one so that because the array is zero indexed, and we also want to remove the uh, i value as we go through the actual string itself. So if this is the case, we've got a mismatch and it's not a palindrome. So we could actually return false from the function here. Uh, but if we do actually get through all the way through our for loop and we've checked every item, then we must know that the uh, each value has been checked and we don't have that mismatch, so it must be true. So if we actually try and use that against our base string of Anna, we actually get a value of false, which is unusual because Anna should be a palindrome. And the reason for that is that the string has a capital A at the start and a lowercase a at the end. So if we were to just manually update the string itself, you can see we now get a true result back, but we don't want to be relying on our input strings to actually come in a lowercase format. Uh, they may have many uppercase and lowercase letters in there. So what we can actually do is just convert the string to all lowercase by calling the to lower case function on it. And you can see when we run the code again now, the result that we get back is true. So there's also another problem that you need to consider when dealing with palindromic strings, and that's basically that the letters itself are what is considered a, a palindrome, but sometimes you get strings like this where they've got spaces in different places and also commas and question marks and other symbols. And obviously these aren't in the same place at the start and the end of the string, so this won't be a palindrome with our function. So what we could do with doing is actually stripping out everything that's not uh, an actual character so that we can just test the parts of the string that are actually considered a palindrome. So if we actually run the code now, you'll see we get a false value come back. So let's work on stripping out those characters. And the way we're going to do that is by using the replace function. And we're just going to replace those characters with a, a blank space or a, a no space at all rather just to remove them and we're going to use a regular expression to actually match the characters that we want to discard and so we'll say uh, the in string is going to be equal to the in string again but we're going to replace and you define a regex with two forward slashes so we're actually going to use the backslash w in our regular expression, which basically matches everything that's not an actual character. So the spaces, the commas, the question mark, all of those will be matched by this particular regular expression. And we need to make sure it applies to all of the characters we want to remove. And we can do that by passing in the G modifier to make it a global regular expression on the string. So if we actually save that and run the code again, you can see we now get a true value. And just to show you what the string actually looks like when we've actually modified it inside the palindrome function, you can see it's just a, a series of I's and D's. And when they get compared in the for loop, you can see that it's palindromic. So using the for loop is fine, especially if you've been given a task where you can't use any built-in functions, but there's an even simpler way of doing it without having to actually go through the for loop and do that check. And because by very definition a palindrome is the same string forwards as it is backwards, we can literally just reverse the string once we've got rid of all the characters and put it into lowercase and check if the reversed version is exactly the same as the input version. But of course, if you've seen some of the other JavaScript snippet tutorials, you'll know that you just can't call reverse directly on a string 
because as you see in the console, reverse is not a function that's available on string objects. So what we actually need to do is split this into an array, reverse it, and then rejoin it back to become a string. So the simple shorthand version looks a little bit like this. And now when we run the code, you can see we're getting a true value again. So as with some of these other challenges, there are many other different ways of doing it, but either using a for loop or reversing the string are the classic ways to do it. The one thing you've got to be careful of is making sure that the string that you're actually checking has any symbols, spaces, or anything like that removed. You're just checking the letters themselves and that it's all in the same case, either lower or upper case, so that you know you're not going to get a mismatch on a case sensitive character. So that's it for this snippet. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any updates and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.